Hey everybody, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. You're watching Tesla Time News. Episode 500. On oh, Now You Know. Wow, we made it to 500. That's insane. It's pretty unbelievable. <laughs> and hey, thank you so much, you guys, for watching and for commenting and for liking the videos. And sending stuff in. I mean, it makes it so much fun for Jesse and I. So maybe we have another 500 in the tank. What do you think? Sure. <laughs> and we have a little video here. I have not seen this yet. This is from our team of editors from around the world. Uh, let's check it out. Hi, Zach. Hi, Jesse. Hi, Zach and Jesse. Hey, Zach and Jesse. I'm here at the 500th episode Supercharger to say congratulations. 500 shows. That's incredible, Zach and Jesse. Woo! 500 episodes, guys. That's f***ing awesome. Hi, Zach. Hi, Jesse. Hey, Zach and Jesse. Congratulations on the 500 episode. It has been quite a journey. Congratulations on 500 videos, guys. Congrats on sticking to the facts for 500 consecutive episodes. Congratulations on 500 amazing videos. That is an incredible achievement. Congrats Congratulations and can't wait to see many more of them. Thank you very much for letting me learn <laughs> weekly since 2017. And thanks for building a fantastic community. Thank you so much for letting me be part of your Now You Know journey. Thanks so much for bringing us great EV news and investing news every single week. All the work you put into each show week by week and now there are 500. Let's go for a thousand. Cheers. Keep up the good work. And because of you, now we know. Now we know. Oh wait, I got a video to edit. And that is going to be a surprise for us. So when you're watching it, we'll be watching us telling you about it. We'll, we'll have watched it. I haven't seen it yet. So comment down below. Let us know what you think. All right. So Kyle spotted this yesterday. Two Model Y validation vehicles on El Camino Real, San Bruno, California, approximately 20 minute drive to San Francisco. Oh, so where is that in relation to downtown San Francisco? Well, here is the map. You can see that San Bruno is south of San Francisco. Wow, that would be quite an area for RoboTaxi if it goes that far south of the city. How big is Waymo's map area? Here is the Bay Area Waymo map. Oh, so Waymo goes down to San Bruno too. In fact, they go down all the way to uh, Burlingame. Okay, so game on, I guess. Uh, wait, the, wait, this, this just in. Tesla AI just posted invites to our Bay Area ride hailing service are going out now. And here is Tesla's official map. Okay, so that's way bigger than Waymo's area. Tesla's map is about 75 miles from north to south, and it covers the Fremont factory on the east side of the bay, too. It goes all the way down to San Jose. Elon said you can now ride hail a Tesla in the San Francisco Bay Area in addition to Austin. Now, from initial reports, it seems that there are safety drivers in the robo taxis in the Bay Area. OK, so not just safety passengers like in Austin. That's probably because regulators in California want to prove the robo taxi safety before allowing those safety drivers to be removed. Um, that was the case with Waymo. But how about pricing for rides in San Francisco? Well, we haven't got word yet on the initial pricing in San Francisco, but in Austin, we're getting word now from Tesla Chan, Tesla has launched a robotaxi policy called Short Rides Now Cost Less with Dynamic Pricing from today. So he's been on 11 times today and here's his data. Okay, so let's see. After 11 rides and 56 miles, the average rate per mile is a dollar and two cents. So how does that compare to Uber? It's hard to do an apples to apples comparison since Uber uses many different factors from like time of day and demand surges and stuff. But on average for short rides like these, Uber costs about $2.20 to $2 dollars and 60 cents per mile, or at least double what Tesla charges so far. Obviously, this is all subject to change. Now, Farzad posted that for longer rides, it looks like Tesla's dynamic pricing for RoboTaxi is currently about 20% less than Uber. So here is an Uber ride. And then a similar ride in a RoboTaxi is this price. But do we have any word on actual rides by non-Tesla employees in this uh, new RoboTaxi service in San Francisco? Yes, we got this ride from Tesla Economics, who live streamed their ride. Um, this is my first RoboTaxi ride in the Bay Area. He is not touching the wheel. He just has his hand over it. So what you're seeing just right now sure. is actual footage from that ride. This is not a Tesla employee. Although, as you can see, there is a safety driver in the driver's seat. Obviously, they're not driving the car. They're just sitting there with their hands near the wheel in case something goes wrong. Interesting. I mean, this is something that was reported last week by Electrek saying that it was live, but it wasn't yet. So we've been waiting to report it until it's actually happening. We know that Tesla employees have been doing this for testing purposes, but now it's actually open to the public if you get that 
that invite. Interesting. And so, I mean, the area here seems so much more massive than in Austin. I mean, do you think that that's because of safety drivers? Do you think that they're, they don't have to validate as good? I think because they had been testing this for months, um, they had already had a chance to get the map to some size they wanted. And I think Elon probably thought, you know, this time, instead of trying to play catch up with Waymo, let's just beat them. Interesting. From a cultural perspective, having the San Francisco Bay area mapped is a lot more significant than just like Austin, Texas. I mean, this is a difficult area. I mean, mm-hmm. anyone who's been to San Francisco knows that the traffic is difficult. Getting into the city is difficult. Um, and so this is just really cool to me to see that they can handle this kind of map. I would love to see more and more footage. I'm sure plenty of people are going to go show us. And that's going to be great to see because Austin, let's face it, is a pretty easy city to drive around. I mean, we're from New England. We know what we're talking about. But San Francisco is tricky. And so I'm really dying to see how well Tesla's handle it. And so then we need to see how many cars are on their network, you know, in San Francisco and in Austin. We need to see how that slowly ramps up over time. We need to see if, you know, Austin's map expands or if there are more cities that are going to come online. And then it's going to be like, are we going to see CyberCab? Are we going to start to see RoboVan? I'm starting to get really excited about Me this. Me too. I know. There's so much to talk about. We're going to be talking about it more on Patreon bonus stories today. So please join us there. And thanks to our buddy Joe and our friends at Smart Charge America for sponsoring this episode. Since 2007, Smart Charge America has delivered fast, affordable, reliable, and safe electric car charging solutions to thousands of residents and businesses nationwide. Yeah, Smart Charge America just installed our Tesla Cybertruck PowerShare charging system. Very soon, our Cybertruck will be able to back up our house. Smart Charge America took care of everything. They work with certified master electricians who are licensed and insured and their local installers. If you need anything from home chargers to batteries, residential to commercial, I personally wouldn't go anywhere else. Just go to smartchargeamerica.com and request a quote using your phone or computer. It's free and fast. Trust me, you'll thank us. So Brent Mayo, who is an XAI and SpaceX engineer, posted this. Being a leader in the community doesn't just take money. It takes courage and commitment. We, the XAI team, are committed to all three. XAI, which has built its Colossus AI computer in Memphis, Tennessee, is supporting four local Memphis schools by hiring local vendors to complete facilities improvements that have been deferred by the city. Brent Mayo said, this is the neighborly thing to do, and we look forward to this. And what he's talking about is these are four schools where basically, I don't know if it's because of budget reasons or whatever, they had to put off doing things that you should be doing to schools. And so the schools are falling apart. And XAI came in and said, hey, look, we're your neighbor now, so we're going to pay for these things. And they just went in and said, you don't have to issue a check. You don't have to do anything. We will take care of it. And I think that's really nice. And it shows that Elon cares about the communities he goes into and he wants the best for them. And this is, again, something we don't hear about in the mainstream media. We don't hear about the good things that Tesla and XAI and other Elon companies do. We just hear about Elon being bad. So as of today on Tesla's European websites, Europeans can no longer order custom configured model S's and X's. What do you mean? I mean, if you click the order button in Europe, you are taken to a local inventory page of existing Model S and X cars. You can't choose the colors, the wheels, etc. But didn't Tesla just update the Model S and the Model X this year? Yeah, there were minor changes, but not a real like refresh like they've gotten in the past. And that is leading many to wonder if Tesla is going to phase out their Model S and X luxury lineup. Well, I can get why Tesla is doing this. They don't sell many S and X models in Europe and they're made in Fremont, California. And so the logistics of shipping them halfway around the world must be really expensive. So maybe Tesla will just produce batches of S's and X's in Fremont and ship them to Europe using the customer preference data that they already have. And then that way they'll keep the cost lower. Yeah, I'm not sure. We asked our patrons this question. So we'll bring it up later on the Patreon uh, poll question because it could be that or it could be the beginning of the end for these cars. I just don't know. Let us know what you think down below. So have you been watching all those people gliding by on electric scooters and you're finally like, you know what? That looks like fun. I want to get an electric scooter. But then you go online to look for one and you get completely overwhelmed by the sheer number of choices. Well, that's where we come in. Just head on over to our other channel. Now let's review. Not Now We Build. That's our build channel. And Not Disruptive Investing. That's our investing channel. And Not Now We Adventure. That's our e-bike adventure channel. Head on over to Now Let's Review, where we review all sorts of e-mobility products, including the fifth wheel V40 Pro e-scooter that we just covered in our latest video. We cover all the features 
features, specs, pros, and cons to help you decide if this is the right scooter for you. And if it isn't, I'm sure that we've reviewed one that is. Yeah, we have reviewed dozens of scooters, so we know what to look for, and we can help guide you through all the pitfalls. All the features you need. And those you don't. Check it out today if you're in the market for a scooter. All right, it's time for Sunspots. So according to Reuters, Tesla and South Korean LG Energy Solutions have just signed a $4.3 billion three-year deal. LGES will manufacture LFP cells for Tesla's Megapacks in its Michigan factory. This is to help avoid tariffs and reduce shipping costs. But I mean, this is Reuters. Can we actually trust their reporting? I know what you mean. Uh, LGES did announce Wednesday that they had signed a $4.3 billion deal with a company. They just didn't name the company. And remember that during the Tesla earnings call, Tesla CEO CFO Vivehav Tanasia did talk about Tesla's energy division needing to get battery cells from places other than China to avoid tariffs. And he said that Tesla would be, quote, securing additional supply chain from non-China based suppliers. So it does seem like this is the story. So this makes sense. LG was seeing diminishing demand for cells to go into automotive. So sourcing a three year contract to make cells for Tesla energy is good for them. Yeah. Exactly. And now that they're going to be made in America, hopefully more Americans will actually realize that this is the way to go. I don't know how many Americans are buying mega packs, but I mean, hey, they're only like one point six million dollars. Right. I mean, get all your friends together. (laughs) Just take some of your earnings on your Tesla holdings. There you go. And look, if you want to get some batteries, but you don't want to get a mega pack, talk to our friends at Energy Pal. They'll help you go solar and battery for less. They know all of the stuff you need to know, all the tax rebates and all that stuff. Let them know that Zach and Jesse sent you. Link is down below. All right, it's time for our video contributor stories. What do we got today? York was in his 2018 Model 3 in FSD when this happened. Oh! Whoa, wait, FSD handled that? Yes, it did. So uh, the Lamborghini thought uh, he could take an illegal left turn. Uh, and just also, do whatever he also wanted. Also, I mean, so first of all, you're taking the illegal left turn. Okay, if you look both ways. And, and went into the opposing lane without looking? Without looking or slowing down. You know, it's just Lamborghini things, I suppose. So, uh, wow. You kind of don't expect that to happen out in the middle of nowhere like this. And FSD handled it. I don't That's think I so would have cool. handled it. That's so cool because normally, right, we would take it out before that happened and do it ourselves because, you know, you just don't want to rely on it. In this case, it did it, which is great to see. I think in a lot of cases, you know, you have a Lamborghini in front of you. I think a lot of people are going to gawk at it Mm. and then they aren't going to realize that it's pulling into their lane. I know. And then you're going to hit a Lamborghini. I don't know. Not too many people have auto insurance policies that are kind of geared up for that. Yeah. I mean, usually your maximums don't cover that cost. The good news is it wouldn't have been your fault, but you need that dash cam. So another reason to own a Tesla. Wow. All right. It's time for our Patreon bonus stories. We got a lot of stories just for our patrons. Remember, join us there for as little as a buck a month. And we're giving away a Tesla wall connector. Uh, Another reason if you needed it to become a patron. And also you get three Patreon bonus stories a week. Which have only multiple pay, stories in them. And you only pay a dollar a month. It's a pretty good deal. So we'll see you guys over on Patreon. All right, we're back from Patreon bonus stories. It's time for our shout outs. These are people that support us for five bucks a month or more. Who do we got today, Jess? We've got Carl and Catherine. Aaron Sierra. Chuck Tyler. George Gorham. And Matt Anderson. Thank you so much, guys, for making this show possible. All the way to episode 500. All right, and we said we had a poll, and we do. Do you think Tesla is phasing out the Model S and X? Afraid to look, because they're usually right. No, no one thinks they're phasing it out. Well, actually, 29% of them do. That's a lot. No, that's not a lot. Stop. They don't know what they're talking about. Come on, you can't get rid of the Model S and X. <laughs> I don't know. They'll be around for a while. <laughs> All right, it's time for Elon's X's of the week. So Aditya Gupta, who works at XAI, said we at XAI are looking for researchers and engineers for scaling up our RL environments with user feedback and preference in the loop. Apply here or drop me a DM. Elon says this false nomenclature of researcher and engineer, which is a thinly masked way of describing a two tier engineering system, is being deleted from XAI today. There are only engineers. Researcher is a relic term from academia. Whoa. Okay, so be careful, Aditya, how you post. Elon went on to say SpaceX does more meaningful cutting edge research on the advancement of rockets and satellites than all the academic university labs on Earth combined. But we don't use the pretentious low accountability term researcher. Engineer. Wow. Whoa. All righty then. Okay. And as a play on the Sydney Sweeney American Eagle gene controversy, so you know this ad campaign by now, I think, Tesla posted, our seats robot also has great genes. 
Elon said, testing rubbing jeans on our seats. <laughs> Morgan says, why do liberal white women hate white people so much? Elon said they've been programmed to do so by their teachers and the media. Elon said, Grok Imagine is still early beta and is optimized for maximum fun, so should be evaluated as fastest time to make a fun shareable video rather than visual auditory perfection. Our heavy duty video model will train on the 110,000 GB200s coming online next month. So just have fun with it. Don't try and do massive movies with it yet. And Elon posted this, that X is the number one news app in the USA now. He went on to say the path to solving hunger, disease, and poverty is AI and robotics. And what matters is solving the limiting factor. All right, it's time for Community Mail Time. Community Mail Time. Remember, we need your videos and thoughts and pictures. Send them to hello at nowyouknowchannel.com. What do we got today? Sean had to pull over to get this amazing shot of a sunset in Arizona in his Cybertruck, of course. Wow. Um, he also spotted his first Silverado EV. Nice. Shane spotted these EVs in South Carolina. Oh, I love to see towing in an EV. That's nice. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad you don't see what it is towing. What's it towing? <laughs> I think it's a gas pump, oh. like a diesel pump. <laughs> Douglas spotted this Cybertruck and this happy decal on a Model Y in Toronto. Robert spotted this motorhome towing a Model X. And the one right next to it is using Starlink. I think a lot of RVs are going to be using Starlink. <laughs> Ian saw this XPeng event at a mall in Bangkok, Thailand. And Jason writes, I just wanted to share my new install of ground mounted solar and batteries that I did myself. I recently needed a main electrical panel replacement installed for my house and I needed power for when it was getting installed. So instead of opting for a gas generator, I went with solar and batteries because I wanted to use the system to continue to save me money. I have four 400 watt bifacial panels installed in my backyard along my driveway due to not wanting to mount the panels on my roof as they would be more efficient and I wouldn't have to pay a contractor to install them. I instead mounted the solar panels on shipping pallets that I got for free. Thanks, Facebook Marketplace. The battery backup I'm using is a 3840 watt hour system called the Anchor Solix. We know that one well. You can find our video on that. It's the F3800 plus. It features a 6000 watt inverter and the ability to expand its battery capacity to 26.9 kilowatt hours per unit. I normally get about 1200 watts, but today it's cloudy, so I'm only getting about 800 watts. Recharging, it usually takes about four to five hours of good sunlight with no load. I had my electrician install an off-grid outlet that directly plugs into the unit so I can run things like my window AC unit and my gaming PC off it without having to stretch extension cords into the house. It came with two 200 watt folding panels from Rich Solar as a package deal, so I can set them up if I need more power. I went with this particular unit because of its space-saving features, its big inverter, and the price for the unit. Doing my solar setup like this allows me to steadily increase the solar panels or battery storage as needed without having to take out a loan or pay high prices for contractors to install the system on my roof. That is a real DIYer there. I know. Thank you so much, Jason, for sending that in. And remember, you can send in your stories, your videos, uh, and your pictures at hello at nowyouknowchannel.com. All right, time for some supercharger reviews. This is where you guys go out and review the superchargers that you find. Hello, Zach and Jesse. We are here at Depend Off Superchargers in Austria. There are a lot of amenities. As an example, there's Burger King, Dunkin' Donuts, and KFC. This is our second week of a European tour, 2025. We've been to Romania to visit our grandma, Bunny. Bunny. And we have about a week left of driving around in Europe and seeing all the sites before we return to Denmark. Now you know. Now you know. Hello, good morning, Zach and Jesse. It's uh, Chris uh, writing from you today from a place called Kananaskis, Alberta. This is a, uh, a supercharger that just opened a couple of days ago. Gorgeous sunrise behind me. It's uh, a truck stop slash Tim Hortons pit stop, which is a uh, donut chain. And uh, I don't know if you can make it out in the video. Mountains in the background, heading west, out to the west coast. Gorgeous spot. Uh, not much here, but it is a very, very convenient location just off the highway here. So what's the Jesse scale? Seven-ish, little tip. Let's go with that. Have a good night, now you know. Thank you so much for doing Supercharger Reviews. We've got a website called nowyouknowchannel.com and on it, pretty much the only thing of note is the Supercharger Review page, which is a map with everyone's Supercharger Reviews on it, and you can upload your own there as well. Thank you for joining us today, everybody, for episode 500. We'll see you on Sunday for episode 501. We gotta start doing Roman numerals, huh? <laughs>